This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the estimated range and bearing line, which is a subfunction of the Abris moving map display. We'll start by entering the navigation page of the Abris with key 5, and then by pressing key 2, we can bring up info and the estimated range and bearing line options on key 1 and 2. Starting with info, we're able to see that we have the coordinate data, altitude, and magnetic declination value for the listed area that the cursor is selecting. By selecting the estimated range and bearing option on key 2, we have more information, including the coordinates of the selected area, bearing to the selected area, distance to the selected area, altitude of the selected area, and again the magnetic declination value of the selected area. Slewing of the cursor is done with the right rotary knob, with axis selection of vertical and horizontal being made by pressing in the right rotary knob. Next in the example, I'll set up a nav point for this location, but the coordinate data held in the Abris is incompatible with the coordinate data held in the PVI-800 by default. So in this case, we have to enter options and change our unit to use the decimal format for coordinates. Now that the coordinate data held in the Abris has been converted to use the decimal format, it's now compatible with the PVI-800, enabling us to use that data to create new waypoints or nav points. Now by selecting navigation point 1, we're able to see that the navigation point has been placed on the location that the estimated range bearing line has selected. Now at this point, we can also use the estimated range bearing line to take measurements between two points. By selecting key 2, the marker option, we will place a marker down on the location where the cursor is selecting and enable us to drag the estimated range and bearing line to a new location. This will enable us to take information between the two points. So in this example, we have our coordinate data for the first location and for the location that the cursor is now selecting. We have the bearing from the first location to the location the cursor is now selecting, as well as range, as well as altitude of the first location and the new location that's currently selected, and the magnetic declination value of the currently selected location is also displayed as well. So at this point in the example, I'll create a second navigation point. So in this example, I'd be able to use the first one as an ingress point for one of my wingmen, giving them a good range to set up to attack the location at the second navigation point. This is one of many uses of the estimated range and bearing line.